Hello everybody, this is the All the Rounder and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 3 um, World War 1 mod. And as we left off, in retrospect, we won the war. France capitulated, Russia capitulated, and Russia did not turn into the Soviet Union. As for the most part, Serbia, Albania, Montenegro, um, and pretty much Greece are gone. The Ottoman Empire is on our side and completely sieging the northern part of Britain's North African colonies. As for the most part, they are on a small stalemate throughout the Middle, the middle Eastern region and the pass to Asia underneath Persia. And what we're going to do is we're going to have one set goal, or two parts of one set goal. We are either going to have everybody in the Central Powers Alliance, or we will conquer everybody. Granted, this might drag out a little bit. If it seems to be a little too slow, slash always so nonchalant and doesn't, like, peak interest, um, then I will probably stop, but as for the most part, um, I've already influenced key countries in different parts of the world. I mean, we've got Persia, which would help expand the front against British, the British Indian region. And yes, I know there's parts of, like, Africa and, um, Persia and stuff like that. This area was called British India. Um, we've got Persia, the provisional government, which is nationalist China. We've got Uruguay, and we've got Venezuela. Now, they may not seem like big countries, but Uruguay is a great distraction for Brazil because Venezuela can save this front but if Uruguay joins Brazil will focus everything over here so I'm just kinda keeping these as buffer zones put that way mm, let's go As for the most part, we are trying to keep things collected. As usual, we're having a small minor issue with our supplies and stuff, but that can easily be managed. Because we are not getting land lease anymore. Because we are not at a major war and we do not really qualify for Lend Lease. So, yeah, we have been denied, more or less. And as for the most part, things are starting to switch over, and I am just fully going out on the Navy. What I'm trying to do is build up my navy and then build an assault fleet. And what I'll do is, let's say France wants to join the war again, because logic. What I can do is, what's this? Offensive. What I can do is say that somehow France has been able to break through and they're getting close to Belgium. Well, they've got all these forces just lined up here. What's to say if I get a small force of like two corps, that's that's ten divisions. Let's say they're all infantry. Let's keep it simple. And I roll around and I land them back here somewhere in like Le Rochelle Le Rochelle or a Vendee. The, nope, that's not right. Paul, 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 Can I 
find like a good one that I can pronounce. The mouth of Lorraine, or Lori. Either way, somewhere back here in this little, like, V area. Anyways, I could easily expand out, capture, or made made two major cities, Borodix and Nantes. Quickly est establish a good defensive front here in the little peninsula. Capture three cities. Brest, Nantes, and Bordeaux. If they're still not that coordinated enough, I might get lucky and capture the city of Toulouse. Cherbourg. And if the fronts start to connect up and they capitulate on the front. That means I could get Khan and so on, so on. But as for the most part, as you see here, I don't really have anything to spare because somehow we're all over in Greece. Why that's happening, I don't know. It's just a. F I don't think it's not really a bug because it happens in the regular game too. Yeah, as for the most part, Greece is about to fall. We are slowly influencing nations like Persia to help expand and further our war effort. Every once in a while, you'll still see me go check the um, diplomacy tree just to see the progress. And it looks like we are gaining Russia. Are we gaining Russia? Nope, okay, we're not. We are gaining Russia. Um, all. <laughs> okay, good. We are getting China, too. That's a good thing. I'd lend other countries lend lease, but since my situation with my IC, it's not the most beneficial. So I just kind of stay put. That's interesting. Why was that set up like that? Greece is about to capitulate, and France has already capitulated, so let's get rid of those. Yay, Persia! Now we have Persia on our side, and they will help to extend the front. It may, it may not be much. It may just serve as a further distraction. But let's put it this way, it helps to reconsolidate British forces and to help us form some kind of breakthrough. If they would treat a lot more Persia annexed Afghan. Okay, well that was, that was fast. Oh, <laughs> okay. But... Anyways, you know what? I, I think I think they're doing pretty well. I'm I'm, I'm just gonna stop talking. I'm just gonna stop talking. talking. Yeah, I'm just gonna stop talking. They really surprised me.
I can give them one lease, but that doesn't mean I can distribute anything. I really wish I can get more find a way to get more energy. I know it's because of this, but it's something that I really cannot help. I'm just in a terrible position. Italy was not really that effective in World War One. That's why they didn't join and that's why they didn't join early in the war. Italy joined around 1916-1917 was a Spanish flu. The, the 1918 flu, ep, flu pandemic was an unusually deadly influenza pandemic, the first of the two pandemics involving H1N1 influenza virus. It infected 500 million people across the world, including remote Pacific Islands and the Arctic. It killed 50 to 100 million of them. 3 to 5 percent of the world's population, making it one of the deadliest natural disasters in human history. I did not know that. I like studying history and all, but I mean, I did not know that. What a mess. Nice. Now we have a more stable front over here. Where's Bulgaria in this? not in the alliance already what's their hold on let's look at their neutrality see I can't invite them in the faction it's got to be the faction leader Bulgaria has a value of 20.75 drifting towards the central powers okay so how are they not already in the central powers I don't get this Portugal. We need Spain. There's a Spanish kingdom in this. They're drifting to the Triple Entente. Nice. Ah, elections of 1918. So, let's see, our head of state is Vittorio Emmanuel III. He's considered a weary stiff neck, susceptibility to internal pressures, plus 5%. Organization regen. Oh, wow, well, that's nice. Um, head of government, Luigi Pel Pelos. Oh, general. Land organization, plus 5%. Foreign minister, Felice Napoleone. Cav Canavaro Canavaro General Staffer and Tell during peace plus 10% Armament, Armament Minister Luigi Pe oh, it's the same guy as the head of government Infantry Proponent Infantry Theory Decay and Militia Theory Decay minus 20% 25% oh, wow. that's actually ooh, these are all really helpful um, counter espionage, crime fighter. I, I love some of these things. 
um, Head of Intelligence, Eugenio De Rossi, Technical Specialist, Espionage Bonus, and I don't know if you can read the rest of that. Luigi Cadorna is still here, Chief of Army, and Chief of Navy, and Chief of Air Force. There you go. And as for the most part, this has been the all-arounder. And as always, if you like this video, please leave a comment down below. See if I can improve anything to better your, to better your viewing. And I will see you guys next time.